Howdy YouTube, welcome to RV Daydream. And as the shadows are slowly closing over on this device, I wanna talk about Ingway's latest e-bike. This is their E26. This is the first time they've gone into just a straight on cruiser, like a beach cruiser. So they're going after the big guns. You know the ones that I'm talking about, Rad Rover, Hemiway, quite a few others. Let's see how they did. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. Now, normally what I would do here is I would open up the box, I'd show you the packaging, I would then show you different levels of installation as far as what it looks like going together. However, Ingway has done something that I haven't seen any of the other manufacturers do on a regular basis. And I like the video that they put out to where they show the complete installation or assembly of this product. So. The nice thing on my end is there's no need for that. I will talk about if there's any differences that I see from most installations of bikes like this. But in this case, you guys are gonna get to see a pretty short video, which is kind of nice. What we're gonna do is uh, put this together off camera, uh, assemble it, and then talk about all the features, which is things packed full of them, and then uh, get you uh, a discount link, a code in the description, and uh, see if this is something you wanna jump into. So climb aboard, let's take a look at what this looks like put together. Okay, unfortunately I did tell you a bit of a lie and it's because every time I open these things up, I am impressed with how consistent they are with their packaging and they always seem to have the minimum amount of foam that's required to hold these things and safely keep them in place. I had to point that out. Altogether, not a big deal. Uh, in this case, I did have to put the rack on it. Um, a lot of them that I've had in the past, the racks have already been assembled, but I'd have to say it's uh, probably a 30-70 mix uh, to racks not being on the bikes. So uh, be aware, you're going to assemble the bike. There's not a lot to it. First impressions, the bike is striking. Uh, that yellow, it's a matte yellow. It's very, very bold. Um, I was kidding around with Heidi talking about uh, we're in eastern Ohio and we're real close to the PA border. And of course, all the Pittsburgh fans would love this one because <laughs> it's definitely Pittsburgh colors. Uh, I, I like to have bright colors on my bikes. Uh, you know, when you're out on the road, you need to be seen. Uh, talking about being seen, going back to the uh, controller here or the uh, brake light, I'm impressed as I was with some of Engway's other offerings on how bright the tail light is. I mean, we're, you know, there's the sun. It's not exactly dull out here and the headlight on this one is probably one of the best that i've seen uh there's a few leds in there that i could see and it's very bright again even though it's the middle of the day there's a running light that's up on top and you can see it gets hot enough that they have cooling fins built in to the housing for the light uh, you do have a lockout suspension and an adjustable suspension on the front so uh, basically you can tighten that up and make the dampening a little bit more stiff this does have hydraulic dual disc brakes i love hydraulics because it takes very little effort to get those brakes applied and when you have big you know big uh, disc on here like this one does um, you can really stop this thing really quick so some of the features of the bike other than what we're looking at the motor itself it's a 48 volt, 750 watt motor, and it's a peak 960 watts. Now I've had bikes that have had peaks of 1,000 and 1,300 with a 750 watt motor. However, this does have 70 newt meter of torque. So that's, that's really good. It's a, a strong motor. All of our Ingways that have had 750 watt motors have been very strong. We have not had any issues uh, with a lack of power. Not only that, but uh, we have had motors from them that are 500 watt, and those are very strong too. So something they do with their controllers and the way they set them up, they, they really make these things, you know, push the bike pretty well. Uh, this battery is a 16 amp hour battery. It is a, again, 48 volt, and it's a regular offering that you see with a lot of these. Um, I don't think that this battery is overly large. 
and I don't think that it's too small. Um, I think this is like right in the wheelhouse of what these bikes, what most riders uh, encounter um, needing. So I've seen as big as 20, 22 amp. I've seen as little as 10 on these things. So uh, like I said, this is kind of middle of the road. Of course, you have those big giant tires. We'll talk about those in a second. Um, the max speed on this is listed as 28. You know, these are one of those things that those are ideal situations, um, you know, as far as what the rider size is, if having a 160 pound rider, uh, this is supposed to be able to go 38 miles, just over 38 miles in just electric mode only with no pedaling. And they're saying like 87 miles. Okay. I'm never going to see that. I mean, I'm 270 pounds. There's no way I'd even come close to that. But what I found is that usually the ranges that I get with this kind of a setup um, is usually around the 12 mile mark in uh, electric only at full throttle, up hills, not pedaling at all, in the wind with me. And, and I know a lot of you are saying, oh, 12, that's, that's not a lot. I'm telling you what, you go out and ride a bike, you know, sidewalks, traffic, whatever, uh, over six miles, 10 miles, and you'll see that 12's a considerable amount. Now, I have gotten as far as 20, but it wasn't pretty on the end. I mean, there was some pedaling involved and I didn't really care for that. Again, I'm a bigger rider and I don't pedal. I don't like the pedal. That's why I like these electric bikes uh, that are bigger just for comfort because I set back on the seat pretty hard and don't really put my weight all forward, um, you know, on the pedals like most. Now, with that said, this does have a built-in uh, compression shock that's in there that's a like a gas charge shock that you'd find like on a hood strut or something and the seat is very generous it's a very comfortable seat this is for taller riders though um, now there's two differences between the e26 offerings that they have um, there's an ST and then a t you know just a regular um, basically you're going to get this one or at the ST, which is step through, which you lose this bar up here. Well, we've got plenty of step throughs. I wanted to try to get something that might appeal to male riders a little bit more. And this one definitely looks very rugged. Even in this bright yellow, it's a very rugged looking bike. Um, let's see, what else can we talk about? The max load on this, talking about my weight, um, you can put 330 pounds on this. I see that to be quite comfortable i again being 270 i'm closer to that 330 mark than most and i could still honestly see uh, another 40 pounds on here um, you know on the rack on your backpack whatever the case may be and the bike is built very well the welds and everything on it are very well that i'm sure it can handle it now as far as the tires these are 26 by 4 they are all terrains the thing is with these big bikes a lot of people don't do and that is recognize that they are made just as much for traction as they are comfort. You need to adjust your air pressure in your tires to make the comfort level that you want to ride at. Um, it, it's got to be something that you've got to play around with. Don't overinflate these. Don't put, you know, 36 pounds in there, 40 pounds, 50 pounds. Uh, these things should be running right around the 20 pound mark. So I know on camera it's very hard to tell, but this is definitely for a little bit taller riders. I think Heidi would have a hard time with this one. Um, they are recommending that riders on this be anywhere between five foot five minimum to six foot eight. And the six foot eight, of course, the, you know, the seat would be up even higher than it is, which the seat is at its lowest position right there. Cause again, cause it does have a shock built into it and the handlebars will adjust. It's dual adjustable handlebars. You can see here, um, and on top here, that'll give you the angle that you want, but more importantly, this will give you the uh, angle to put the handlebars a little bit higher, potentially, if you need to do that, you know, depending on how high you have the seat. And of course, you can twist the uh, handlebars to your liking at that point. Now, as far as the bike itself, um, this thing's got to weigh right around 85 pounds. Um, it, it's a relatively heavy bike. 
It is an aluminum alloy, so they did make it as light as they possibly could, but still keeping it really strong. The bike dimensions, though, are 77 inches by 27 inches by 47 inches. So, you give you an idea, that's, you know, 77 long, you've got 47 tall, just over 47, and then, of course, 27 wide, and that's mainly the handlebars uh, and possibly the pedals, too. But uh, overall, it's a pretty decent bike as far as the build. Again, uh, going back to the welds, uh, you can see they have a nice stacked look to them, a very nice finished look. Good, good finish all the way around. And then as far as the controls on here, uh, you have a power button. Um, I do not see any kind of a USB on here. I'm going to double check. Yeah, I don't see any kind of a USB. Uh, I see that on some of them, but this one does not include it. And the display, a little bit harder to read in the bright sunlight. Um, I can still read it. Uh, I don't know how it's coming out on camera, but I can read it just fine myself. Now, when you turn on your headlight, though, and I run with the headlight during the day, too, um, you can get an idea that it dims down and it's a little bit harder to read. I mean, it's even harder for read, you know, from this distance, but that's not a deal breaker. Don't make that your main reason for buying this because quite honestly, that's not it at all. And there's some nice functions in here. Of course, you can adjust your pedal assist. Um, there's different features uh, that you can cycle through to see how many miles you've gone, what's your top speed. Uh, again, the top speed on this one is listed as 28. Those are ideal situations. Um, this is the first time I've seen an open bell like this. Um, the bell becomes kind of like a megaphone and it's very loud i guess it let me okay it's nice you can flick it kind of easy uh, and the reason i say that is because we've been on trails and if you have a loud obnoxious horn uh, people get upset that you blew your horn at them um, even though you know you're you're to yield them they're to yield to you whatever uh, it, that's a, that's a sensitive subject, just like riding on trails. But the bike's build overall looks very good. I'm, again, highly impressed. Metal fenders, um, the racks got a 25 kilograms, which um, I don't know what that is. I'll have to put that in the description here or up above uh, what that comes out to be. Oh, and this is a tourney, a Shimano tourney. This is an entry level shifter. Um, it is a trigger shifter. So you push the trigger here to go up and you push the finger part up here or the thumb part here they're both thumb um, to go back down again and then of course the throttle you just got a three-quarter throttle here uh, i like that I, I like that more than i do a thumb throttle um, that's my own personal preference um, you do have a set of keys the set of keys all they do is just lock the battery in place um, you can turn the bike on and off with or without the keys uh, that's not necessary they do give you a couple of keys and as far as what else they give you um the bell that's what came in here and then the uh, charger, which, thank you, Ingwe. This is one of the co only companies that's smart enough to do this. They give you a three amp charger. So the fact that it's a bigger charger will allow you to get this thing recharged a lot faster. Uh, typical charger other than that, but the fact that it's a three amp, I mean, you wanna ride the bike. And if you've got a two amp charger, it takes a lot longer for it to charge. Of course, you got a toolkit, and then the manual itself, and the manual, just to give you a, a heads up here, the manual is pretty straightforward and very easy to read. It tells you everything you need to know. Again, there's a video that's online to help you with your build of the bike, putting it together. But that's essentially what it looked like whenever I got it. And again, the manual will tell you what to do uh, as far as assembling it. But uh, you don't have to. You can watch a video of that. And I'm, I'm impressed. I tell you that they always do a really good job of explaining their bike. It's not just a generic manual. So again, here's the display, all the features. Uh, that talks about all the settings that are in there and how to set them up. I love Ingway bikes. We've had Ingway bikes now for oh, quite some time now. This has got to be about the fourth year that we've had Ingway bikes, and this has got to be the seventh bike I think we've had. Six or seven, it's been quite a bit. So um, very good company, very reputable, very easy to deal with. And whenever they said they were going to get into a new release of a, a cruiser, like a beach cruiser, um, this is kind of like a mountain bike on steroids, more than a beach cruiser. But um, 
yeah, I, I like this. Now, of course, if you're gonna do some really hardcore riding off trails, you're gonna need something with full suspension. They have that. They also have that kind of bike. If you need something smaller that you need to be able to put into your RV, fold up and put into your RV, they have that. If you just want a smaller bike in general, something that's just an easy step through, lightweight, but still have good power, they have that. But this is their offering. This is their newest offering. So there's going to be links down in the description. I don't know if there's going to be a sale code on this or not, um, or at least that time that you're watching the video. But if there is, definitely go in the description and research that and uh, click on it. Take a look at it. Um, there's really no reason to get hung up on brand names, but I'll have to say that Ingway um, is definitely making their way into the market. You know, I can actually mention this bike to other people that have been around electric bikes to some extent, and, and they know this name, they've heard it. Um, it used to be at one time, there was just a few e-bikes out there that everybody knew about. Um, Ingway needs to be one of those that comes off the, the tongue relatively quick whenever you're talking about good quality e-bikes because everyone we've had, they have not been a disappointment at all. And still to this date, four years later, Heidi's favorite bike, the one we've kept all along is an Ingway bike. So um, that's saying a lot with how many e-bikes we've gone through over the years. Uh, this is definitely uh, a good brand to hang on to. So again, links are down below in the description. As always, we hope to see you out there. Bye.